All right, so what do you think? Should we show them around the homestead? Yeah, let's do a winter homestead tour. You ready? Let's go. You want a treat? We're gonna try and do this while the baby's sleeping, and Trip is inside babysitting. <laughs> So the first stop on the tour, this is the uh, first structure we built. When we moved here, it was uh, late September last year, and um, winter came about less than four weeks later. So we were living in a tent, and we got six or eight inches of snow, and then a couple of days later, we got a few more inches of snow. And so we decided we better build something permanent in case we have to spend the winter in it. We actually spent three nights in this, we set up our sleep number bed inside. It was real comfy. It wasn't insulated. We used a space heater. It was kind of chilly. We finally finished kind of closing in our shed. It's not finished, but um, finished enough. But um, anyway, it, it's designed and purposed to be a storage shed. In front of it are hops trellises. So I planted some hops rhizomes last year and uh, they produced a little bit. Usually the first year they don't produce a whole lot. Hopefully they're gonna produce a whole lot more, but that is the two tall poles um, in front of it. She's Drop insane. it. Hey, go. <laughs> so when we bought our property and finally moved up here, our plan was to build a cabin with a loft, have a little bigger space than we actually ended up with. But after doing some research, um, a couple of things played into the cabin that we got. Number one was after doing the research, it was gonna cost less to have a cabin built by a local Amish guy, which is what we ended up doing, versus just the cost of the lumber. So buying the lumber would have cost us more than the actual cat finished cabin would cost. Uh, a big decision in that was freeing up our time to focus on other projects. That was kind of the biggest uh, point because winter was approaching really fast. Last winter, um, it started snowing on October 18th and the ground was covered in snow from until, uh, what, May? Yeah, May. 
So it was all, it was close to record setting snow amounts. But anyway, so it freed up a lot of time having someone else build our cabin and it let us focus on other things like building this storage shed, which we really needed for storage um, after we got through sleeping in it a few nights. Yeah. <laughs> So here is our cabin. It, uh, like we said earlier, is an Amish built cabin that we had delivered. It's a 14 by 28. Um, and when it was delivered, it was just the shell of a cabin. We installed the chimney pipe for our wood stove. Um, Eddie later on added in the covered porch. Um, and then we also, we, Eddie <laughs> added in um, the side run in there as well. And that's mostly for firewood storage. Um, for parking vehicles during the winter when it's not, you know, when we're not using them. So a funny story, um, winter was rapidly approaching. We had already had a lot of snow uh, before our cabin was delivered. And we got about, I don't know, about two or three inches of snow the second attempt to have our cabin delivered. Um, and we already had a good bit of snow in our driveway. We didn't have a plow. We didn't have a way to clear our driveway. So Francesca came up with this great idea we put pallets behind our mule, which is our Kawasaki mule, and we drug it up and down the driveway <laughs> to clear the driveway so the guy could get in to deliver our cabin. So a little redneck ingenuity, but hey, it worked. It was the, it was turned out to be the very last day we could get our cabin in. The next day it snowed about eight more inches and no one would get in and out after that. So we had a little bit of flexibility as well when we went and ordered our cabin. We could decide where we wanted windows placed. So we had the two windows in the front, a window kind of where we were planning on putting our kitchen, a window on the side coming out the side from the kitchen, and then a window on the other end where is our bedroom, so to speak. We're going to do a cabin tour, so we'll show you all the, the inside. That probably won't take long. Uh, Francesca and I had to clear this area. Um, it was all grown up about five feet or so when we got here. We had to clear the area where we were going to put the have the cabin put and uh, actually build a foundation for the cabin to sit on. So we had we did all that by hand with rakes and shovels and we had uh, a load of gravel brought in. We hand shoveled all of that gravel, leveled it all out and then placed pylons for the skids that the that the cabin is built on to for it to rest on. Uh, so it was a lot of work um, even though we had the cabin built we still did a lot of work getting it getting everything ready for the cabin to be to be put here we found out that we were able to get the pylons level ish um, but we weren't able to get them extremely level and so it was really nice to just be able to pay the delivery guy a small fee to have him level it for us and get it official and that way we weren't leaning and rocking in the cabin. <laughs> so we got the cabin in so late um, last year and it was already snow on the ground. We had pallets for steps um, which wasn't ideal and of course no covered uh, space outdoors at all. We had the cabin and the storage shed and that's the only part of this homestead that was under cover. So we decided over the winter that in the spring, the first project we would do would be to put a porch across the front of the cabin and it's made a huge difference. It's uh, eight feet by 28 feet. So it's a, it almost doubled our um, undercover space for the cabin. We use it as a workstation to keep tools out of the weather, to store wood, that kind of thing, because everything here is still a work in progress. But the porch has been a great addition. Olivia, come here. So our power situation is solar, obviously. Uh, we're totally off grid. We've got six 100 watt panels and uh, together they go through under the ground through a pipe and um, back up into the cabin to where the charge controller, the battery bank is and the inverters. And um, I, I designed it myself, so it's not gonna be um, professional installation. 
But so when we bought a van to travel the U.S., we put two solar panels on the roof of it. And uh, that was the first time I had ever wired anything close to being electrical. And it, didn't, it ended up working. But um, so we had two panels on the van and had, you know, a third, obviously, of the power we have here, but which was plenty for 70 square feet. This system is really based on the same kind of principles that I used when I did all the research and, and uh, ended up designing and putting the system on the van. Behind the solar panels is our well. Um, it's covered in snow, of course. Like everything else here on the homestead, this is a homemade solar panel rack. Uh, just two posts sunk in the ground. I built the frame and, and then I built it so that we can change the angle throughout the year. So right now it's set for winter, which is almost straight up and down. And then in the summer, by midsummer, it'll be out at its farthest angle, which farthest it, this one goes is about 46 degrees. So it's pretty far out there. So as you can see in our run-in area, we're just mostly using it for storage right now. We've already used up all of the firewood that we had stored here in our homemade pallet firewood holders. <laughs> I don't know what you want to call <laughs> firewood them. Firewood rack. Firewood rack, yeah. This is just a nice extra little covered area to store things during the winter or when it's raining outside. It's hard to tell, but we pulled stuff off of the porch and put it over here. Us. <laughs> Wake from her nap. So the two vehicles behind me are the ones that we use the most these days on the homestead. We start out each winter by using the plow on the front of the UTV to plow the snow off of the driveway, which is about a mile long. Um, that way we can drive our Toyota Tacoma truck back and forth from the main road to the cabin. But when the snow becomes too much and the UTV can't manage it very well and push it out of the way and keep it out of the way, then we revert to our snowmobile um, to drive back and forth from the cabin to where we park the truck down by the road. Um, that way we're able to get in and out as we need to and then if anything were to happen to the snowmobile, um, it not work or something like that, then what we do is just use the old fashioned method of snowshoeing. For example, last winter, our snowmobile actually broke down up by the road when there was still at least a couple of months of winter left. And so from then, we just had to snowshoe back and forth on the driveway and just pull our jet sled behind us whenever we had to go to town to get groceries or just run errands or anything like that. You walking the dog, Eddie? <laughs>
right behind me over here we've got uh, another firewood stash and then way back there we've got our compost pile for all of our uh, kitchen scraps that we don't feed to the chickens or the sheep and for our humanure which we will Definitely go into more detail about that during a separate video about uh, our composting toilets and humanure. So we barely got the barn built, kind of like barely getting our cabin in here this last winter. Barely got the barn built before winter this year. It really had already snowed before we got it closed up. You can see the doors are uh, just OSB because the rest of our wood is covered in snow over there and frozen solid, so there's no way to get to it. Um, so we just put up temporary doors and we'll replace those in the spring to kind of finish out everything. But the barn is 20 by 30 with a full loft up top. Um, I never built a barn, obviously. The first thing I ever built was that storage shed, then the porch, then the uh, kind of run in on the side of the cabin. So now a barn. It's pretty daunting. I wasn't really sure what I was getting into, but I knew what I wanted. I knew I wanted to do it. So it's based on how the Amish build barns around here. So I'd be a so I basically went to a friend of ours, Jonas, an Amish guy, um, him and his family um, lived not too far from us, and I took a lot of pictures and I picked his brain a lot and loosely based my barn off of his. His barn is huge. This is 20 by 30, so 600 square feet on the bottom and then a, a loft on top, so 1,200 square feet total. But um, but the structural design and the, the covering, the outer covering, is all based on how the Amish build their barn. So it looks like an Amish barn, just not as elaborate and, and as, as large as theirs are. So we found a local Amish sawmill. They sawed all the lumber for this. It's all rough cut hemlock, is what it is. And um, we hauled it all here ourselves and then um, stacked it, of course, and then slowly but surely started building the structure. It's all um, hand hammered. We used we used a table saw and a miter saw to do the sawing and saw angles and cut boards to length and rip boards and those kind of things. But um, tons of tons of nails hammered by hand and um, you know it was a lot of work but it was a lot of fun too and you know a huge feels very accomplished to have built something like this. Hope yeah so I basically built it by myself. I did have some help here and there uh, from Francesca who was by the time we finished it was eight months pregnant. <laughs> Emery came probably a couple of weeks after it was finished I guess and it hasn't fallen down yet so hopefully it'll be standing for a, a few years. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on doing a barn build video uh, that kind of shows you how this was built, how we built it, not how to build a barn but how we how we build a barn. Um, and so I'll go into a lot more depth into how things were put together and why I decided to do things certain way. Things I got from the Amish, show you some Amish barns that it's kind of based on. Um, but let's go take a look inside.
just got done making a few laps up and down the driveway on the snowmobile. We got a lot of fresh snow dumped on us within the last 48 hours and so essentially you couldn't see our driveway at all. Um, and what I do is I go back and forth and kind of um, each time I go to a little to the left or a little to the right of my previous tracks just so I can widen out the path, pack it down really well. That way if Olivia is running behind us um, she doesn't have to run through really thick, heavy snow. And whenever we have to go run errands or go down to the end of the driveway to get to the truck, um, we're essentially not blazing trails with a newborn attached to me. So as you can see, we parked the truck at the end of the driveway and I just have to shovel out a spot behind the truck so that we can turn the snowmobile around. Uh. <laughs> that should be fine even with the baby crying or whatever because that's how we do. This is how we do.